welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and it's free to play day here on the free to play CGB channel. Shocking how that works out that way. How is everybody? So, I'm gonna take this off. Mega headphone total esports gamer headset can stay over here for a little while. So, what's up? First of all, let's reroll some of these quests. Our A quest. 25 land seems easy enough. I'm not sure which of these to do, but they both have white in them. It's then about black or green, and I have a black deck, so reroll you. No 750? How unfortunate. How else are we doing? We have 550 gold. Our mastery is on level 10. The tree is one win away from the Cult of Rakdos deck, and these decks are apparently where the secret sauce is, where we get to really add some extras to our collection. So my first goal here on my free-to-play account is to unlock the whole M20 Mastery tree and get all those cards, and then worry about figuring out the right deck to craft for the meta and how to do it. But I have some ideas. I have some sweet budget decks in mind. So let's get to it. We want to get that final mastery orb. We've got to win a game, I think, is how this works. We've gotta get through. Maybe we get the sweet meteor golem card style, I guess. I don't know. We also have uh, a little bit more for a pack. Still not quite sure. Like, how do I get 200 EXP, right? Where exactly do I get that? This reward is for a weekly win. I get 250 EXP. So there. I get 250. I get a pack. And don't quite get the orb but it's close working on it i'm trying to get the hang of it so do i want to play the mono red or the mono black deck in ranked to try to get there i honestly like the mono black deck significantly more once we get the rakdos deck we'll probably check it out and play it a few times and then decide if we want to get into green white blue some of the other colors with our free to play account to continue unlocking the mastery tree so here we go. Where am I? Bronze one? Something like that. And here's two Knights of the Ebon Legion in the opener. This rare one drop is probably one of our better cards with the Soren's Thirst to back it up. So let's see if they can take the beating to the opponent as quickly as possible. A mulligan. Love a good mulligan in the morning when it's my opponent's mulligan, that is. Let's play with our surroundings. Let's shoot some lightning out of this tower. Let's make this flower dandelion thing do the Cupid shuffle. Let's, uh, what else can you do here? And make a gargoyle freak the F out, I guess. All right, game on. Knight of the Ebon Legion, one, two. Vampire Knight. Two and a black, plus three, plus three, and death touch until end of turn at the beginning of your end step. If a player lost four or more life this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Knight of the Ebon Legion. What a beast. Our opponent with a sacred foundry, a red-white land to open the party. Oh boy. I'm curious to see if they can answer the board quickly and what they might be playing in this showdown of the Bronze One decks. Have they unlocked some cooler cards than we have? Boros Challenger in the house, but don't worry, the pump ability from the Knights makes this still a very good curve. Here's a block. The opponent wants to keep the vampires from growing, but we can pump the Knight that got blocked so that the Boros Challenger dies. The vampires don't grow this turn. We only dealt one damage to the opponent, but I'm happy to trade three mana to kill one of their creatures. But now we'll see if the opponent has a bigger creature to follow up with. What have you got? Boros mages often feature creatures like Tajik, Legion's Edge. The fully unlocked versions have History of Benalia, but here we have a Lightning Strike for the Knight of the Ebon Legion. And we can play out a Vindictive Vampire or a Thirsting Bloodlord, or we could pump the Knight of the Ebon Legion to get it growing. I think I just like resolving Vindictive Vampire. We actually don't have any life triggers though, but the opponent missing their land drop means they probably have a number of other spells in hand. Some might be removal spells. Let's try to draw out their removal spells. Actually, Thirsting Bloodlord is probably the best way to draw out their removal spells. They won't want to kill this first. 
And if they kill the Blood Lord, maybe they'll leave the knight alone. And I believe the knight is quite honestly, sincerely, the best threat. I think it's better than the Blood Lord, and I think it's better than the Vampire because of the pump ability. Here is a Sunhome Stalwart, which is a 2 2 first striker, but that won't adequately block either of our creatures. We could use Soren's Thirst to kill it and then get in for more damage. We could also play the Vampire. I like having the Vampire on the battlefield. I do feel that the opponent will have a way to grow the Stalwart, though, so. We're going to take a shot here. I also am going to play around a card called Deafening Clarion, which deals 3 damage to all creatures. It's unlikely, but it's possible. You never know what people will play here in the arena. So by pacing our threats and getting the Ebon Legion to a 3-4, we play around the Deafening Clarion, and yay. Actually, this is only a 3-4 until the Blood Lord does something about it. But Defiant Strike is actually a pump spell for the opponent's creatures that they cast on our creature just to draw a card. That's a sign of desperation and sadness. There's a picture on the wall next to them under in the, in the dictionary under the term very sad. There's a picture of a Defiant Strike on the opponent's creature. And that is it. The victory is achieved. Two points are earned. So do I get a pack? What's up? I get it back! Alright, and 250 gold. Let's crack those rewards. Now nah, we'll save it till the end of the video. Alright, so we still need a little bit more for the Mastery Orb. Let's go get it. Mono Black. Unlock this new deck for me. I want, I want a bunch of cool Rakdos cards. We get to open with Duress, but then we don't have many other plays for quite a while. I'm still going to keep it for the power of Bolas' Citadel. Epicure of Blood, you might be okay. God, you look like a... just looks like a jerk. Alright, let's try it. Let's hope that we're against somebody that Duress and Davriel are good against. We want to play a control deck or a slow mid-range draw. If we play an aggro deck, we might get overrun, and the discard cards will get promptly punished. So here we go. It is a control deck. Careful what you wish for. Um, I guess I have to take the Duress, and then our opponent will have a Sinister Sabotage if they draw another blue source, which is scary. But, well, well, I think we can draw. We might draw more Duress to get rid of it. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. I think that taking away the Duress, though, is smart. I think the opponent would duress us and either take the Citadel or Shadow Mage, and either one is a pretty crucial card, and I definitely want the Shadow Mage coming down next turn. Our opponent shocks and discovers. That's a great draw for them. It can The Surveil 2 lets them look at their top two, put them back in any order, draw a card, so they can make sure they draw land, and they put a Thief of Sanity in the graveyard, which is a very powerful card. Our opponent's on a legit Grixis control deck. This is going to be a tremendous challenge. Let's have Davriel start picking up his hand. No one has seen my face and live. Perish the thought. And a cast down will go to the bin. Our opponent does not have the mana for Sinister Sabotage, however. That's the bright side. Let's hit them again. I don't think you'll be needing that. And there goes the sabotage. Perhaps they have drawn another. And here's an art aerialist, which our opponent got rid of their cast down, so they can't remove easily. And our opponent draws the land they need. It's a rare land. They shock, and they Vraska's Contempt the Davriel. They're sick of discarding cards. Another land off the top plays the Epicure of Blood. Now the Aerialist will get in there. We're only one mana away from Bolas' Citadel, which is what we need to resolve the most. We have to dodge Thought Erasure and Duress from our opponent. Let's discard the Aerialist, or, or sacrifice it as it's the least strong. And uh, slam in with the Epicure of Blood. So, do we want to discard the Aerialist or the Murder? Our opponent has Thief of Sanity, which is a huge problem. And they can get it back with the Eldest Reborn. I have to discard something to the Eldest here. And our opponent has a Contempt for the Epicure. I think I'm best off honestly discarding the Aerialist and murdering the Thief when it comes back. As opposed to putting an Aerialist out there and hoping it lives, because the Grixis deck will have far more removal spells. So, I'm not going to count on this Aerialist to be alive. I'm going to discard it to the Eldest Reborn. 
And please don't make me discard my Citadel. If we had drawn a land there, I think we just win the game because Citadel is so powerful and provides so many cards. But here in this situation, we're in great danger. Now we have to discard the Murder because Disinformation Campaign makes us discard a card. There's a Lava Coil for the Epicure, so it's all about the top of our deck. Can we draw the land? We cannot. I'll play the Vindictive Vampire. Now our opponent gets to use Eldest Reborn to get back Thief of Sanity, most likely. Yes. Mmm. Two straight missed land drops. That could have been the Citadel. How relentless is our opponent? They're not afraid of the Vindictive Vampire, and I don't think they should be, to be totally honest about it. This card is not a tremendous threat to a fully powered up Grixis control deck, the likes of which we're facing. Raska's Contempt takes it out anyway, with Extreme Prejudice. Let's try a Child of Night. If the opponent makes me discard the Bolas' Citadel, I'll be heading out of here, but right now, Thief of Sanity hits me. Look at my top three cards, pick one, put the rest into the graveyard. When you see a spell go to the graveyard, you know the opponent picked up something nice. And that is enough for me. The opponent's fully formed Grixis deck was too strong for our little black deck, but at least we get a level up for playing. Alright. Claim the prize. Lock the orb in. And here is the Cult of Rakdos. So, ready to check out this deck? We get another B deck, a Spawn of Mayhem, that's a Carnival Carnage. We'll get to check all those out here. And let's see what's cooking. Three Shocks, two Spewer Spitters, two Carnival Carnage, three Footlight Fiend, one B deck Bedazzle, two Cult Guild Mage, a Dreadhorde Butcher, it's a nice rare, two Light Up the Stage, a very strong uncommon. Three Skewer the Critics, one Bedevil, a very strong rare, three Hacrobats, Spectacle, two, three, can gain Death Touch and plus two, minus two. One Judith, excellent rare for the deck, one Mayhem Devil, two Rakdos Roastabout, three, two, and it becomes blocked, one damage to the player of Planeswalker it's attacking. It's kind of a medium Spectacle Enabler. Theater of Horrors is a spectacle payoff. It's wonderful. Exile the top card of your card. The top card of your card. The top card of your library. During your turn, if an opponent lost life this turn, you may play cards exiled with Theater of Horrors, and for red and three, deal a damage to target opponent or planeswalker. The person who casts the most spells usually wins. This gives you a way to cast multiple spells a turn. And then we have Spawn of Mayhem. Excellent. You can spectacle at it out for three mana to be a 4-4 four, four flying trample. That's pretty darn good. And then afterwards, one damage to each player, 10 or less life, put a plus one, plus one counter on the spawn. Rakdos Firewheeler is a decent four drop. Blade Juggler is a decent three drop when you spectacle it. Get to the point, destroy target creature, scry one for five mana is a bit overpriced. And we get the rare land, a blood crypt. So... Let's build up our red-black deck, shall we, by getting some good cards in there and taking out some bad cards. The deck, as it's presented to you, has a pretty good synergy package built around Spectacle, but it does have a number of cards that are very mediocre. They might get you Spectacle, or they might play with Spectacle, but they still don't have a large enough effect. So a few cards that are universally strong that I want to get into the deck are Duress, Knight of the Ebon Legion. This also plays very well with Spectacle because the opponent doesn't like blocking it. So getting that into the deck is completely great. And then we could get in Davriel, but I'm really not that much of a fan of Davriel. I think we'll have enough discard synergy. And I think you've seen enough times where Davriel didn't do too much. Embodiment of Agonies is an interesting card if we have a full graveyard, but we can't count on that early in the game, which is when you really want to be casting it. So I don't think it fits our deck. I think you need to play it in a deck that throws things into the graveyard as part of the strategy. Blood for Bones, not a lot to reanimate. Not the right card. So what else? We've already got the spawn in there. Uh, Doom Whisperer is an extremely powerful six drop that's worth a try. And we could still try a Bolas' Citadel as a way to get more cards. I think those can replace, as generically strong kind of over-the-top powerhouses, can replace some of the weaker cards in the deck. Fanatical Firebrand, I believe, fits perfectly. It has the ability to get Spectacle. I'll probably want the fourth Shock, 
as it's pretty good removal. Scorch Spitter is a type of Spectacle Enabler, but I don't think it's right for the deck. Um, I'm just going to leave it on the sideline for right now. Ember Hauler, Dreadhorde Arcanist. This is an interesting card for sure because we will have some amount of spells, but not a lot of ways to pump this, so I don't think it fits the theme. And what else am I missing? Anybody else need to play in this deck right now? The Cavalier of Flames, of course, could be exciting, but it's still too expensive and not the impact I'm really looking for. And we actually have all these Bloodfell Caves, which, while we're an aggressive deck, I do need to cast my spells on time, so some amount of them might not be a terrible idea. We already have four Rakdos Guildgates in the deck, but we don't have Guildgate Synergy, which makes the caves strictly better, because when they enter the battlefield, you gain one life. If your deck doesn't have specifically Guildgate Synergy, you should add the caves and remove the guild gates and I'm actually going to still keep two more guild gates in the deck because having more dual lands in the deck just increases the probability that you get to cast your spells with the right colors of mana. I'll add the other Bedeck Bedazzle as it's a good removal spell and in our Rakdos colors. I took it out of mono black mostly because I hated seeing that little black mana symbol there because I'm OCD. Are there any artifacts that want to play along Somebody gave me some crap for not including Arcane Encyclopedia. Well, um, Arcane Encyclopedia is no longer given to you in the starting collection, so I will never be able to run it in my young CGB decks, my free-to-play decks, anymore. It's the end of an era. Now I'm going to cut the cards that I consider bad cards without overly reviewing them. Spear Spewer as a one-mana O2 with Defender isn't really what I'm looking for. Colt Guild Mage has activated abilities, which are nice, but the cost on them isn't great. And as a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, it doesn't do enough for me. It does leave our 2 mana spot a little bit empty, but hopefully the um, Hacrobat can step up to fill the void and be spectacled out for 2 mana. After that, the Rakdos Rustabout is not a card I'm enthusiastic about playing. I think it's very underpowered. Now we start to move into some of the tougher cuts. Mayhem Devil is fun, but we don't have a lot of ways to sacrifice our permanents. As you see, there's just nothing really built around sacrificing here. Literally none of my cards say sacrifice at this point. So the Mayhem Devil is going into, this, into the sidelines. Get to the point at five mana is too much mana to spend on killing a thing. And that leaves us with 60 out of 60 cards and the Cult of Rakdos is ready to roll. I do wish I had more two drops. And when I look at my two drops, they're just really, sadly, they're very bad. Not great at getting spectacle. Uh, Child of Night won't get through easily. Vampire Opportunist, the Fen Lurker. None of these are easy to cast or easy to make, get through, and deal damage to the opponent. I guess the closest thing is the Cult Guild Mage, but having to pay the mana to get the spectacle means we can't play our three drops on curve anyway. So we're going to have to roll without a lot of two drops in our curve, which is a bit unfortunate. You want a nice little cascade stairwell slanted graph like opposite of a growth chart right here and uh we got a big old hole in it but we'll make it we'll make do we'll make do let's go play some games with our new cult of rakdos deck get some exp work on some quests can we get out of bronze that's the big question here are we going to bump into Super Grixis players, or can we navigate this free-to-play account to the next level? And right away I see a Dreadhorde Butcher, and I love it, as that is a two-drop I'm looking for. So we can go turn one Firebrand, turn two Butcher, turn three Hacrobat, which sounds really great, but it does depend what our opponent's up to. They get to go first, and they have a Watery Grave, which... I just, I'm already having nightmares and flashbacks to the last game where the opponent played all these good cards. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Turn 2 Lazatep Reaper enters the battlefield, makes a zombie army, and it's a 1 2. That's a lot of bodies for only 2 mana. That's a big pain in the butt. It's going to be in the way. I would love for a way to get the Butcher through, but I don't think we're going to see that until the opponent decides to attack me. I could sacrifice the Firebrand and play the 2-3 Hacrobat. 
If something bad happened to it though, I'd be in a really bad place. I sort of want to save the Firebrand until I can trigger Spectacle, use Skewer the Critics, and play De Dreadhorde Butcher to get through, or light up the stage. So this is weird, but I do think the play here is to play the Cliffs and say go. And just build up our mana and try to make sure when we use our Firebrand for Spectacle that we get as much out of it as possible. Gleaming Overseer is going to make that very hard. This is a 1-4 that gives zombie creatures Hexproof and Menace. Ugh. I could have in response killed that, but it would have just made another one, so I don't think that's a good play. Alright. Very rough. Very rough in here. Hmm... We won't be able to interact with the opponent's creatures until these die, and they seem to be playing on a mass deck, which means this is going to get bigger and stronger. We could play the Hackrobat for three, and simply have it ready to go. I really want to use this in a turn when I can also get in with Butcher, use the Skewer, the Critics, and the Light up the Stage. I just don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I'm going to be patient for at least one more turn. Try to get as much out of Spectacle as I possibly can, and have a Hackrobat out here to hold them off a little. Death Baron. Oh lord. Now these all have Death Touch, because they're all zombies, and an additional plus one plus one. But the opponent is turning them all sideways, which I suppose is what I want. We have to take a lot of damage. It's gonna suck. Okay. Now we sacrifice our Firebrand to trigger the Spectacle. This only protects armies, so we should still be able to skewer the Baron. Our opponent has one mana open that could be some kind of interaction, but we don't know quite what that might be. Let's play Light Up the Stage. I guess I should have waited and used the Shock instead and I could have saved the Skewer, so that's a bit of a mistake. I can also Shock here to play the Blood Crypt, but I'd rather not. So, here comes the Butcher, and I'm going to attack with the Butcher but not the Hacrobat, and at least try to face off with some of my opponent's creatures, but get a counter on the Butcher as we try to struggle our way back into the game. The 2-3 does face off well with everything, but this does have Menace, so we can't quite block it. And the opponent's feeling aggro. I'll try blocking the Reaver. The opponent with a trick. What will it be? Moment of Craving, so they get to kill the Hackrobat. How frustrating. A Judith off the top. Well, let's play that. The Butcher could get in and get bigger. Or it could D up, which I think we need it to do. The shock has to be cast here, so let's use it. We can take out the 1 2 Reaver, or we can take out Gutter Bones. Gutter Bones can come back, and it's only one toughness, so a, one of these can pick it off. So I'm going after the Reaver. And we'll play this tapped, and we'll say go and hope for the best. That's not the best. <laughs> That's very far from the best. All right, we have to kill you, or we can't interact with the, this creature. Let's see how the opponent wants to kill our creatures. If they kill the Butcher, we can take out the Baron. If they kill the Judith, unfortunately, we don't get much out of it. All right, down to two. This suggests two triggers. What died? Just, oh, both creatures died. Oh, Death Touch. My bad. All right, so, fun. We can deal the two damage here and the three damage here, and then the opponent is on just a Gutter Bones. That's a two one. So, let's see, one, two, I'm trying to click. It's not working. Welcome to bugs. <laughs> they come up at the weird times.
Killing the gutter bones is the worst target to here because our opponent can pay two mana to get it back. They say good game. I guess they just knew I was going to draw eight land in this game. And maybe they have some kind of a burn spell too. But if you want to show me your last card, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> they were just hitting their taunt button. A little bit of a flood there. Heartbreaker. All right, let's give that another try. Two foot light fiends and a butcher seems very nice. I like that we've had the butcher in each game and theater of horrors might help us prevent the flood of last time. Opponent wants to be friendly. But we've we faced turn one watery grave in every game today, or at least go back and check that out. Maybe it was a steam vents once, but it's kind of a tilt. All right, butcher up. Let's go. Sultai. What does that mean? Green, black, blue. Sultai. What is the opponent doing? Often this is an explore deck, wild growth walker. But here's search for his kanta. Interesting. Makes me wonder if I should have duressed. But the amount of damage we're dealing to the opponent feels so good, I can't stop now. Let's just get in there and keep playing out threats. Especially threats like Blade Juggler that replace themselves by drawing a card when they enter the battlefield. Spectacling for only three, it's a pretty good card. And now we have two card advantage engines if the opponent manages to answer the board. They're gonna have to get rid of all these threats somehow. And they'll probably be at a low life total when they do it. Another watery grave. And they say go. Bedeck Bedazzle is an amazing combo with Dreadhorde Butcher. <laughs> the Butcher goes to the graveyard with six power and the opponent will take six damage for it. I could lead with a duress, but I like just sending an attack and then figuring out what to do next from there. The opponent probably has some kind of removal spell. An Assassin's Trophy. So, this is a reason not to be deck bedazzle. We can get another land for free. We can play our Theater of Horrors and our Duress if we want to. It's kind of a tough one. If we do six to the opponent and then they also take four more, then they're down to only five life. Is it better to get them dead or is it better to take care of our cards? I'm going to take care of our cards. It's a tough one. They're still taking a lot of damage though, and I think that's okay. All right, damage, down to eight. We can play another Footlight Fiend in a theater, or we can Duress. I think I like the Duress and the theater. We see a Sinister Sabotage, a Chemist's Insight, and a Growth Spiral. I wish I could take the Krasis. I can't. But I suppose here we take the sabotage. And here's Theater of Wars. Your turn. Pretty good Saltai control list. We've got a mix of removal spells, we've got the rare lands, we've got a powerful rare in Search for His Kanta, and a mythic in Hydroid Crassus. When it also runs Negate. Definitely not a top tier deck at the moment, the style of Saltai Control, but it's uh, some that certain people just like to play over and over and over again. So I think I think we've got an opponent here who's playing what they love, and as much as I don't always enjoy being dunked on by Control, I certainly can respect playing what you enjoy. Firewheeler does two damage to target opponent and two damage to a creature or planeswalker. Well, we'll want to resolve that at some point, probably this turn. Send in the damage. And the opponent will insight. No surprise there. Spectacle activates, which means we can play this cliffs for free. Now do we fire do we fire wheel the opponent to two? I think we do, because then if the footlight fiend dies, all we have to do is activate the theater. And we know it will resolve if we do it now. The opponent's most likely play is going to be a um, 
select. Okay, I guess I hit zero now. The opponent's most likely play is going to be a Crassus, which easy bedeck bedazzle target, but let's see what they do. This also plays around Ritual of Soot by being a four cost creature. Ritual of Soot destroys all three or less. And there's our Crassus friend. And the opponent will scoop that up. We had, a, we had a neat way to win there with a Fire Wheeler killing our own Footlight Fiend to deal the final point of damage as well as the Fire Wheeler's two damage to face, but the opponent didn't let us do it. And there we are, Silver! We locked up the Silver. 100, some EXP, Mastery thing doesn't light up. Kill 15 of our opponent's creatures, ways to go, 25 lands, 4 to go, one more black spell. We definitely load up on some gold today. So, knight, tapped land... It's okay, I suppose. Let's see how the opponent leads. If they lead with a Lanoir Elf, I'll feel pretty bad about these tapped caves. But you do what you can do. Wow. Nice opener. So, because I've seen this... I think it might be best to play the cave so that I have shock available next turn. So that this doesn't get a chance to get much bigger. And our opponent with the 1-2 perfect curve. Will they pay the life with the vanguard to grow the knight? They will not. So this card is straight busted and it's going to probably kill us. But we'll see what happens. Let's play a knight of our own. And let's shock the Knight of the Ebon Legion. Get that out of there. Say go. So how much of a vampire deck do you have? So far we've seen Godless Shrine, now we see Legion's Landing, we've seen two Knights of the Ebon Legion. Looks like our opponent pretty well formed vampire list right now. And they say go. So I feel like I should hold this back to block this, and I feel like I should kill the Knight of the Ebon Legion before it gets a chance to do much more. The opponent may also attack with the Legion's Landing to flip Legion's Landing. They're stuck on two mana, so that makes sense. I'm going to say go. We'll be devil before the opponent can enter their attack step. They might commit to some plays pre-combat, such as killing the Knight of the Ebon Legion if they think they can. Okay, well, that's frustrating. But, actually, this may get them to make a little bit of a mistake by attacking in here and letting me eat their token with the knight. Yeah, they don't want to because they know I can pump this. So, let's go ahead and kill off the lieutenant or this. It's going to start growing, which is a big problem. Oh, wait, it doesn't grow. Not unless the opponent activates the vanguard because this will now only deal three, not four. You are the critics. <sighs> hmm. If I attack, I think the opponent will block. Or no, they won't block. And then we can skewer away the knight, or we can light up the stage. Our opponent's stuck on two lands. Is trying to give me time, so I need to make sure they can't flip this. So I want to play the Skewer. Whether or not I get to play it cheap isn't clear. Ooh, chumping away? Interesting. Well, I'm not upset. I still want this to go away. We still have to solve this Adanto Vanguard problem at some point, but maybe we can get our knight big enough if we're given enough time. 
It'll be hard for the opponent to keep Spectacle off next turn. If I can attack him with a knight, I can pump. And they scoop off of not seeing a third land once again. Wow, we got there. Whew. Look at all this stuff all of a sudden. I guess I'll claim these prizes. It When it rains, it pours. I'm just being showered in awesomeness. So I've got an orb. I'll put it where? Let's start working on blue. Blue is kind of a, a favorite of mine. Can I not? I have to win a game first. Play a game with a blue deck to unlock. Okay. Alrighty. We'll do the thing. And then over here, did something happen? All right, I guess. So do we want to tune up the blue deck? I think we can do that in the next video. One thing I do want to do is tune up my red deck. I, th I feel like the Rakdos deck gave us a lot of red cards that go in here. So let's add a few. Can't be too bad of an idea. I do think Spear Spear goes into this deck, I think. I feel confident about that. What else? Well, we have all the Spitfires, and we have the Goblin Gatherings, but Light Up the Stage goes into the deck, and Skewer the Critics goes into the deck. Chandra's Outrage can be in the deck, but I don't know if it wants to. We don't have a tremendous amount of Elemental Synergy, but we've got a good amount of Burn. We could play cards like Bedeck, Bedazzle, and Carnival Carnage. My OCD doesn't allow it. Wants it to be mono red. So, I think the worst card is Goblin's Gathering. I'm sorry. I know some of you love Goblin Gathering, but I, I'm confident it has to go at this point as the worst card left in the deck. We have the Torch Courier is the next one I'm definitely not into, and Reckless Airstrike can certainly hit the sideboard, the sidelines. I don't know if Infuriate's a good card for the deck, but it works well with the Scorch Spitter. Doesn't work well with the Spear Spewer. Uh, Chandra's Triumph is probably the card that can go. It can't hit the face like the Skewer the Critics can. I think cutting some of that makes sense. The Dreadhorde Arcanist can still flash back a Shock, which I guess is a big enough deal, and with Infuriate can flash back something bigger. And the Spell Gorger Weird is a good combo with that because you get two counters. So, all right. I think that's the way I would play my Mono Red. I don't really want to play the Mono Red right now, though. We're just going to go over some quick upgrades because I think it gets the most from the Rakdos deck as opposed to the Black Vampire deck, which doesn't get too much from it. And let's do one more game. Knight of the Ebon Legion, be deck, shock, blade, juggler. Seems solid. And let's start it up. It seems like I have Knight of the Ebon Legion in my opening hand quite a bit. I'm I'm grateful. It's one of the better cards I own. I don't want to burn the face yet. We'll just say go. I don't feel like burning the face even to get a plus one plus one counter here is really worth it. Though that is interesting. I wonder how many of you would skewer the critics to get this to a 2-3. Our opponent repping some Gilgate Esper control. Fire Wheeler off the top. Let's send in the knight. Down to 18 and with spectacle enabled we can blade juggle, drawing an extra card and making a 3-2 body. Two fire wheelers. All the fire wheelers in the deck. If we draw a black source. They can come out and just put on a show for everybody. That's rude. But this hand is pretty thought erasure proof. There isn't much that they can take to bother me. And we get to smash their face some more and grow our Knight of the Ebon Legion. I don't know. What card would you take? I guess the Fire Wheeler has the most damage potential. They take one hit from that thing. And it's Enter the Battlefield trigger. They take six. Nothing else does that much. 
Now a watery grave. All right. I could play the Fire Wheeler here. I don't want to. I'm very wary of Akaya's Wrath. Some card blowing up the whole battlefield. So let's pump up the Knight of the Ebon Legion and get in. Down to 11. And I think I like playing the Skewer of the Critics here. I think the opponent's going to kill my creatures one way or another. I may as well play this while I can do it for cheap. And get the opponent closer and closer to dead. We only need four more points of burn to be able to go right over the top. Here's Oath of Kaya. Targets the knight because it can grow bigger and puts the opponent back up to 11. So that's a very strong play. And then a Hollowed Fountain. We draw a Hackrobat, which with Spectacle we can play. It's a 2-3. It's vulnerable to Oath of Kaya, just like the Fire Wheeler is. But I think I like having the Hackrobat on the field a little better right here. We don't want to go down to only one creature on the battlefield because of Planeswalkers like the Fairy. Well, let's Spectacle you out. You can also hit for 4, which is pretty great. When the opponent's at 8, that's just 2 hits to victory. Here's a Narset. I can now only draw one card per turn, but that's okay. I'm not doing a lot with card draw. And Narset's minus. It's going to look into the deck. What do we find? Thought Erasure. Okay. Does the opponent get to play it? No. And they scoop it up because they know we can shock them, then fire wheel them, then attack them. And we win over the Guildgate Mastering Esper Control. All right, the opponent didn't give me any creatures to kill, and I only have four to go, and I don't get to play all that often these days, so yeah, I'm going for it. I just have to kill four things. Kill four things that my opponents control. Let's do it. Don't be, like, I'll just end up making infinite videos because it's all Esper control decks. Like, you will never leave. You'll never leave. Oh man, if one of these were a mountain, this hand would be so much better, but I can't resist it. Not with two light up the stage. I mean, are we really killing creatures, though? We'll see. There's a Knight of the Ebon Legion. Here's my caves. If that were a another blood crypt, we'd be doing it. It looks like our opponent's on mono black. All right, let's start killing creatures. Kill this before it can do anything too too damaging. Play this. Get out our knight. One. So we can block here. Our opponent might have a play to help kill the knight, but I think we still do. All right. All right. That's the turn. Everything's okay. Let's play the Theater of Horrors. Our opponent is stuck on two mana. Let's get the cards flowing. And let's D up with the knight so we can at least reduce some of the damage from the Conquistadors. And it is vampires. Our opponent pays two life for Godless Shrine. They pump this vampire. They attack with both. Trigger, trigger. I'll block over here. I think we're going to kill Soren, though. There's a shock under there. Oh, boy. So we can pump you. Four, five. We can play this Firebrand. And we can take out the Soren. I think that that is a worthy play. Our opponent may have another one. That would be pretty tough to take. <laughs> Been a rough day. And there's a Champion of Dusk to draw a few more cards. Yeah, when their draw's that good, there's not a lot to be done. But we're gonna fight on. We're down to 10. Can we find a way through this? I think the opponent would take a hit from the Knight of the Ebon Legion, which would turn on our Theater of Horrors. We could shock a Conquistador. We can Fanatical Firebrand the Soren. Let's see what the opponent does. So we use this to gain spectacle. We don't pump it here. We're going to need all the mana we can get. So we definitely cast a shock. The Hackrobat would be nice. We have another red here. We might let the Blood Crypt go. 
Let's start with the light up the stage. We're going to have to differentiate that these are our light up the stage cards and these are our theater of horrors cards. I actually think we let the swamp... I think... Well, the swamp we can play next turn. I think we need the mountain this turn. So that we can play the Hackrobat with the Spectacle. This can gain Death Touch, so it can take on the Champ. So we'll use the, the red mana here to shock away this Conquistador. And then we'll use this Firebrand to take this Soren out. And that's two dead creatures. Let's hope that the Hackrobat can help get us another. At least our opponent's playing almost too aggressive for their own good. They're not using the Sauron's Minus to sacrifice a vampire to kill my creatures. Which is what I would be doing if I were in their shoes. Alright. I'm going to block the 3-4 because we can't stop the one damage that comes from it. Right. Three creatures dead. We're still working on quest mode. Is that a creature removal spell? It's not. Okay. I think that we attack the opponent's face. Can't really get the Soren off the battlefield in a way that makes sense. And if we hit them, what are we doing? Playing a blade juggler? I guess we can play that. The light up the stage is probably better. We really need that spectacle, though. This is a very awkward way to have to go out and get it. Alright, let's start with the light up the stage. These three... Okay, there's a skewer. Skewer can hit the vampire token. Can also hit the Sorin, but that doesn't help me very much. Let's play the Hackrobat. We want the mana up to use the death touch with it. So we can skewer here. I think that taking the Soren down isn't going to do it, even though this can sacrifice to deal three to our face. But we have a quest to complete, and this should be the quest. So at least we got that. And then I guess I get this on the battlefield tapped while I can. I don't have anything to do with two mana, unless I want this to have four power for some reason. But, which I don't think matters when it comes to death touch. Alright. Opponent shocks. Their draw has been absolute beast mode all day, and it looks like it's not done with me yet. Friend of mine fights alone. They get back a Knight of the Ebon Legion. Okay. Fight. What else? If I were them, I'd use the Soren to go face, and it looks like they finally found that angle. So, can they deal one more damage here? They have me at one with a Soren. Theater of Horrors hits another land. How brutal. Well, I can at least see their hand and know how dead I was anyway. And yeah, they have all the vampires in the world here. Is this an opponent? It is? Alright. They want to say good game. Alright. It wasn't. It was not. <laughs> Sorry for the salt, people. That was just a painfully tr terrible game to have to play because I was never in it. I was just always dying. Every turn made it feel worse. But that's magic sometimes. You gotta fight. You do your best. At least we got our quest. We're really close to another mastery orb, so we've got some things going for us. And we got another pack, so I have some packs to open for you here today on the way out the door. Hit me with something good. Uncommon. Chandra's Regulator, good for the red deck, I suppose. I was saying we don't have our Cane Encyclopedia, but Regulator's okay. And then we have this pile. This is probably good for our blue deck. 
It's hard to picture it not going in. And then Leyline of the Void, the second time we've hit that rare. It's very, very bad when you're a free-to-play account to open cards like that. And Mastery, I think we're still just sitting on one orb. Okay, I can't click on anything now. My screen broke. The only thing I can do is go to the store to buy packs. <laughs> it's a trick. It's a trap. I guess we do have the, the gold for some packs, so why not, right? Let's keep working on it. Add more to the collection, but if you're not going to do if you're going to do limited, you can save your gold for that. But I'm not, so I may as well keep using them to improve my cards. Another ley line, but at least that was one, that one we could try in red potentially. Might be good enough. And then what else do we have here? Scheming symmetry. Ugh. Don't get fooled. This is a pretty bad rare unless you can think of very creative ways to make it work. Post your creative uses for scheming symmetry in the chat. All right. Heartbreaks and follies today, but we did get to silver and unlocked uh, plenty of cards. So all in all, a good day here in the arena. Thank you for watching this free-to-play video. I've... I, I, I'm happy to have the Cult of Rakdos deck. I'm happy to keep working on the rest of the decks and the Mastery Tree. Next next time in the free-to-play series, we will play Mono Blue and work on getting that all unlocked. And I know I have two of the Blue Planeswalker. Mu Yin Lang, I think it is. Um, probably said that terribly. You know, skewer the critic. Skewer me in, skewer me in the comments for it. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.